So with this, we had a lady, uh, we have people who got healed in our church of deafness. And there was this guy who went to the doctor and they gave him a new hearing aid. And this hearing aid was like a new, new, really amazing thing. And so they gave him this hearing aid and the doctor promised to him that he will be able to hear 100%. This man was completely deaf. And um, he goes back home to the family and, you know, he's able to hear every single thing they're saying. He comes back to the doctor and the doctor says, so you got the new hearing aid. Um, how do you like about the idea of being able to hear everything again? And he says, this is spectacular, amazing. And, and they told him, did you tell your family? He said, no, I didn't. But I've been sitting at the dinner tables. And he says, in the past two weeks, I have changed my will three times. <laughs> because now he was able to hear and he heard some things that were not good. And that allowed him to change his will. You wanna, have you ever had something that happened to you where you either send a text message to somebody and you send a text message about somebody to somebody and uh, it happened to me once. There's a girl who uh, used to be in our church and um, well she was doing some things that I wanted her to change doing and I send a cell leader to talk to her, make sure she changes her behavior. Well the problem is I didn't send the text message to the cell leader, I sent a text message to her to tell the cell leader to change her and you know she needs to repent and all this stuff and she replied back and she says well I got it and then I just I just felt so bad literally I just wanted the rapture to happen that moment but you, you have no idea the feeling that you feel and then seeing this person next day in church and uh, it, it was not beautiful but sometimes it happens to that so we always have to be careful what we say and how we say it to people in Jesus name amen? amen if you have your Bible let's go together to the Word of God first Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 and a few more verses down. 1st Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 and down. Everybody let's open up our Bibles whether on your device or, or with your neighbor or on your phone or a physical Bible if you have one. 1st Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 and verse 15. But the Spirit of the Lord departed Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Saul's servants, if you have a pen and you're able to underline your Bible, you can underline Saul's servants said to him. Just underline those few words. Surely a distressing spirit from the Lord is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp, and it shall be when he will play with his hand, then distressing spirit from the Lord is upon you, you shall be well. And, said, and Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. I want to speak to you on a topic called change through counsel. Change through counsel. Or if you have enough space in your notebook, you can write down a permanent change through a proper counsel. A permanent change through a proper counsel. As you are writing the title down, repeat this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your faith. Amen. I want to share with you a thought from this scripture that... It's sort of hidden. It's not in a clear sight of this verse. Let me give you the story. The story is Saul is the first king Israel has. Before this Israel had judges, they had deliverers and they had some really awesome priests and they had incredible prophets but they have not had a king and Saul who's a son of Kish comes from the tribe of Benjamin. He becomes the first king. Now he gets anointed by God so oil gets poured over him and at that moment Holy Spirit comes upon him and he becomes a king. He does incredible things for God first few years of his life and then we see after that he begins to fail tests after tests and because of that he, the Bible says, becomes rebellious to God and God tells him, hey since you cannot keep my word you can't be a king no more, you're done. And though the Saul still kept the position and kept the crown but he no longer was a king. He couldn't act like a king because he started to be mental. 
he started to misbehave because of mental problems he started to throw spears at people who like played harp in front of his in his presence so he he was typically normally he was no longer a king even though he still held the office he still uh, held the salary and he still pretended to be a king but in God's eyes he was not a king he gets a demon attacking his life the Bible says a distressing spirit begins to attack him and his servants you know they look at him and they see man our king is going crazy and they're realizing he got some demons he got some problems and they give him an idea they said hey we, we don't really know about demons but we think you need a good music in the court because if you really get good music you can feel better Saul is like awesome idea from heaven get me a musician and the other guy comes in and he's like well I've been you know googling and I, I saw this this guy he's been posting a lot of covers for other people Moses songs and his name is David good looking brave not annoying talented God is with him bring him over he'll play for you and then your demons will feel better and the Saul said yeah let's do it and they bring David what I want to talk to you today about is very very tiny one lesson see Saul became possessed because he disobeyed God's servant he remained possessed because he obeyed his own sermons servants let me explain that when he disobeyed Samuel he caused rebellion and that opened the door for the evil spirit to attack his life he became possessed because he disobeyed God's servant but did you know why Saul remained like that was because he listened to his servants now I will explain that in just a moment Saul had some people around him who gave him an advice who wasn't that this advice wasn't really 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 bad but it wasn't really good it was shallow advice now if they would told him Saul we can bring you some booze you could really drink yourself to sleep if they would tell him Saul this new drug that they sell on the black market could really help you if they would tell him hey this there's this new witch and she really helps people with demons that would be really really bad but they did not say anything like that and therefore when we read this and we see like well but David came David is anointed and so we immediately think that David's the Saul's friends and his counselors gave him a good advice but in reality this advice was deadly and this was the advice that kept him in the situation he was in he listened to their advice and the advice was this you need entertainment to fix your demons you need to bring a kid who can play a harp now at first it seems like this advice is innocent but we know one thing about this advice it didn't work Saul got a temporary relief but he never was delivered Saul for a moment felt better but for a lifetime Saul was tormented by the same spirits because people around him gave him an advice he followed what would happen if they would tell him get Samuel and he will cast out demons out of you he would listen because he listened to his servants they are the people he trusted he had a hard time listening to Samuel but if somebody would be close to him and say Saul if you get prophet Samuel that guy moves with God and the demons will be over now you might have to resign from your job you might have to give up the throne but you will be cured because Samuel will know how to deal with it yeah you might never be a king again and you might have to go back to the fields but Saul you will never have those thoughts again you will be a free man if you will get Samuel here not a musician most of us here all of us here have friends and you're more likely to listen to your friends than to listen to your parents you're more likely to listen to your friends than to listen to your teachers 
you are more likely to listen to your friends than to listen to your pastor you are more likely to listen to your friends than to listen to the news you are more likely to listen to those people who are around you and most of you here are also friends to someone who is in need right now and they are more likely to listen to you than to listen to their parents they are more likely to listen to you than to listen to their pastor or to their priest they are more likely to listen to you than to listen to the teachers in their schools and to counselors and everybody else because you play an influence on them and when you see them having demons and you look and you you know that's a demon you know this is a problem you will always be tempted to be like Saul's friends give them a band-aid for a demon problem it means to tell them you just need a good Christian music you just need to pick up your Bible read the Bible more tell them something that will just you know it's just make you feel better and I'm, I'm gonna mention three simple things of a bad advice that we can give to our friends and three simple things of a bad advice people can give to us but this all hangs on advice because when people get free the way they stay free is the kind of people they have around them because the kind of people you have around you, they influence you. The difference your friends have, the, the difference you, between your friends and your parents is, your in, is the influence. Your parents have authority, your friends have influence. And he who has influence is he who has control, not he who has authority. Your parents have the title. And yes, they tell you, I brought you into this world and I will take you out. But they, for many of you, unfortunately... You, you you don't have influence with them and your your friends have influence over you and that's why if anybody in here who got introduced to weed first it was through your friends not through your parents if you got introduced to something illegal and if you drink first time you did not drink with your dad and with your mom you probably drink with somebody who was your friend why because our friends create influence on us and we are open and if they will tell us something illegal we'll be stupid enough to do it and if your friend will tell you you got a demon you need to go to tb joshua you're like okay yeah i will go <laughs> why because well forgive me i'm gonna say bluntly because we're stupid and whatever influence tells us that's what we do this means yes or no amen because influence opens the door for us to be affected by the by the things that people say and many times people in the authority and honestly I am also carry a certain level of authority because we lack a certain level of influence with people what we say people just like yes yes but they go and do something else why because the people around him who have influence on them say completely opposite you are also influenced for somebody else and somebody else looks up to you and if you're gonna tell them they actually gonna do it the question is what are you gonna tell them when somebody has a problem like this they need a good advisor if you are in a problem like this where you have a deep big problem what you need today is before you need to find God let me tell you what you need you need to have some good people around you who will give you the right advice because even when you find God you still need people around you who will continue to give you the advice you will need to be on the right track and those people that you have influence with not just those people like well I met him in church and all this stuff no but the person who has influence on you because those are the people unfortunately you're like you're, you're open-minded to them whatever they say you're gonna do it even if it's gonna be hard because they have influence on you King Pharaoh Pharaoh who was the king of Egypt the prince of Egypt he saved his country because he found the right man who gave him a right advice his name was Joseph other kings always lean on their counselors our president many people say oh our president comes up with a lot of you know um, interesting policies that we don't agree with if you really look our president doesn't come up with anything it's his advisors who advise him it's the people around him that before he comes up with a crazy idea he sits beside him and he says what should we do and they are the ones who say mm -mm. okay we won't do it yeah well we should do it and we should before praying for our presidents we should also play for people around him because they are the ones who have influence on him and whatever they say many times he's gonna go and do it that's how we are all of us are like that people who have influence on us we do what they tell us 
We listen to somebody and if you respect somebody on a podcast or on a sermon, you read somebody's book and they say something, you're like, awesome idea. You go do it. Why? Because they created an influence on you. King Saul has a problem. This problem cannot be solved humanly. And his friends around him, they tell him, if you simply go to and find a good musician, you will feel better. And he goes about and he looks for a good musician and guess what happens? He feels better for a moment, but he doesn't get fixed for life. There was another guy in the Bible. His name was Naaman. Now Naaman was a captain. He was a captain. He had a leprosy. Well, almost as big problem as this one. Because you can't get rid of demons by yourself and you cannot get leprosy by yourself in that moment, in that time. He has a little girl. She cleans the house and, and she really had some influence on him. And she comes to him and he says, you know what? I know you're a leper. I know a guy who can scratch your leprosy. She didn't tell him that. She didn't say, hey, I know a guy who is as, as, as leprous as you and you can hang out with him and feel better about yourself. She didn't tell him, I know a guy who loves lepers. She said this, I know a guy who can remove that. He kept walking, didn't listen. But she kept cleaning the house. She kept making the dish, she kept smiling, she kept being the best she could be and she kept influencing on him until a captain successful victorious fell prey to an influence of a little girl and guess what he does goes to a king gets a letter and goes to a foreign country that they take slaves from to look for the man a little girl says who will not just make him feel better like the servants of Saul told Saul but she told him a real advice he will remove your issue he goes there he meets the prophet well he doesn't meet the prophet first he meets the representatives of the prophet and the representatives come and tell him hey there's you're gonna be healed awesome you just need to go to the river and by the way our rivers are not the best and dunk yourself seven times and after that you will be as clean as a baby he listened to his excuse me I come and I get this do you know who I am? You little bambino, you go tell your prophet. You people are under my feet. I take your people as slaves. They clean my houses. Did you forget who I am? And you're telling me some messages to go dump myself in your bad river? No. If you, he doesn't come and he doesn't wave his hand like Prophet T.B. Joshua on me, I am not going nowhere. And this is the time where his servants come near him. And they say, well we understand yeah it's completely ridiculous for him to ask you I mean you're such a great man he's an amazing man but if he would ask you something difficult wouldn't you do it and he comes down and he listens to the people around him and they contradict his emotions they contradict his rage his jealousy his mm, my pride they contradict that and guess what he does does what they say goes and like a fool baptizes himself seven times but comes out completely whole why his friends what would happen if they would say oh yes this prophet is bad you know what we should do we should kill him too we should take him as a slave what would happen if those servants would say hey king you don't need to worry about all this you're so popular you're so uh, captain you're so successful forget about you know we can go find lepers camp and hang out there so you can feel better what would if they would give him an advice like the servants of Saul get a musician feel better never underestimate the power you have in people's lives through your influence and never underestimate the power people have over you through their influence never underestimate watch out for counselors who give you advice watch out for people who give you advice on marriage who are not married watch out for people who give you advice on money who don't have a job watch out for people who give you advice on walking in holiness who smoke weed 
Watch out for people who give you advice what it's like to be serving Christ and, and to give generously who only take. Watch out for advisors. Surround yourself with good advisors. Good advisors will protect your life. And the best part about it is when you find yourself in the hole that you cannot climb out. If you have an advisor, he can get you out because he will tell you a secret. He will tell you like a little girl and you may say how can, can she she's a slave but she told pointed him to a prophet and then the prophet removed that problem out of his life advice saved me hundreds and thousands of dollars advices saved me years of headache i was one of those people who when i was a teenager and i had a crush on somebody I would immediately go to the pastor literally if I saw somebody and I thought that they were attractive I would go to the pastor <laughs> uh, pastor got tired of me because every other month it was another person and when I would go to the pastor and I would tell the pastor hey this person you know and I'm like hey they got saved in our church you know this means yes and the pastor almost 99% of the time, 95% of the time would said no. He says, it's not good. First of all, I wasn't ready. Uh, and secondly, he says, it's, it's not for you. He says, you, you shouldn't be doing that. And I felt so depressed after those things. I'm like, he doesn't understand me. He doesn't see things. And, um, you know, I was like, well, he, he doesn't believe they're, they're saved. He doesn't, you know, like, and all of these weird, stupid things as a teenager you get when your emotions get provoked. But the interesting part is the longer I lived, the more I realized is a lot of things that my pastor said about people who at that point, I would literally take a bullet to prove what he's saying is wrong. Like I discipled people. I knew them. My pastor at that moment, those people that I was talking about, he did not know them. And so my argument was this when I would leave, I said, you know what, I'll listen to the pastor, but he has no idea what he's talking about. But because I was 18 and because he was my boss because I worked at the church you know I gotta keep my mouth shut because I want to keep a job. So I would just go home and I'm in my prayer I was like man you know man this pastor doesn't understand like I know these people. He doesn't. I talk to them. I know everything about them and I, I know how man he doesn't get it. And, but I just humbled myself and it was literally years. Pastor anything I, anybody I bring up phew, shoots it. I just got tired of it. I was like I'll never get married. With my pastor no marriage. He just wants me to be single so I don't become distracted with ministry. But the interesting part is this is that in a lot of cases the things the pastor said about people whom I knew so close and my pastor didn't physically. Actually three years later for some people two years later for some three months and everything came to pass. And that's why when I became 22, 23 I became afraid anytime pastor I saw displeasure on my pastor's face I had fear I was like oh if, if, okay I'm not gonna even think about doing anything of that sort if, if if I saw displeasure not even he says yes or no just displeasure to me it just meant and the funny part is there are other people some were his sons of course and and other people who who did that they just simply said well it's whatever my dad says because you know to them it's a little bit different just like me and my dad it's a little bit different you kind of go on a little compromise and stuff but for me because it was my pastor I had this fear and every time when people would do what he would say mm, it would never work I saw same thing happen with real estate when my relatives or even my parents or other people would suggest say don't do that and I said like, well I know this better you know I've been doing this yeah it didn't work advice can protect you it can get you out of a hole and the best thing you can do for yourself is not just to learn to hear the voice of God but to ask God to send the right people he can speak to you through them amen in the conclusion of this message I want you to write down these simple things of what good advice we can give to people and what is the bad advice that we can give to people as people when we find somebody who has a big problem or who has a demon problem or maybe we are in that problem ourselves number one we should always run to repentance not entertainment repentance not entertainment 
The servants of Saul told Saul that what you need is entertainment. Means you need somebody to come and cheer you up. You don't need really to repent. I mean, your problem is not repentance. You, you're attacked by chance. This, this has nothing to do with you. You have not been sinning at all. You have nothing to repent. You, you are Saul. You're like Michael Gabriel. You're amazing. You just need somebody to cheer you up. You just need a good latest CD from Hillsong United to really just, just bump, pump you know pump some joy into your veins that's all you need Saul anytime your advice involves changing somebody's mood instead of changing somebody's mind which is repentance you are giving a bad advice anytime your friends give you advice that involves makes you feel better instead of making you be better it's a bad advice and that advice is from Saul's friends it will make you feel better but it will not make you be better entertainment is what changes your mood repentance is what changes your direction and your mindset in life instead of telling him you need to get some musician they should have told him Saul you messed up we love you we will serve you if you end up homeless we're gonna bring you hot dogs bro you are awesome but you are a sinner you're rebellious you rebel against God dude you you severed your relationship with Samuel. You're crazy. What are you thinking? Of course you got demons. I'm surprised you're not in hell. You need to repent. You really need to. And I'm not talking about crying tears. You really need to change your mind. First about, about Samuel. Secondly about God. And about yourself. You're not that big as you think. So you need to repent. Ah, but that would make him feel bad. Ah, and that could make him be better see most of us are so afraid to make somebody feel bad that we will let him feel good and remain stupid and remain bad and remain possessed and remain cursed and remain without job and remain constantly in that sickness or constantly in that thing because we protect feelings as though they're so untouchable and precious feelings are important don't get me wrong but the root of the problem is not to make somebody feel better it's to make somebody be better and sometimes to do that you have to step on their feelings and you come out you're saying you know what? I love you you are awesome but I'll be honest with you you your life needs to change the way you're thinking the way you're living your schedule your, your money habits it must change and if it that doesn't change honestly we can baptize you in the anointing water you're gonna still be broke you're still going to be miserable. You're still going to be depressed because there must come a change, a repentance, a change of mind, a change of life instead of just change of mood. Yeah, we can take you to the latest comedy. Yes, we can buy popcorn and buy soda. Yes, we can buy coffee and we can buy Red Bull and sit all night and tell jokes. But in the morning, you're still demon possessed. Repentance over entertainment. Bad advice is when you give your friends something to laugh about instead of giving your friends something to think about. Are you a friend that needs a change? Do you have people that need a change? What advice do you give them? The first advice, tell them about repentance. And please, repentance doesn't mean run to the church and when Vlad gives an altar call, raise your hand and you better repent. And you tell repent, repent, repent. Repent simply means change your mind. It means, you know what, what you're thinking about God is wrong. What you're thinking about the pastor is wrong. What you're thinking about your parents is wrong. What you think about yourself is wrong. Change your mind which will result in changing your life. Number two, you need a mentor not a musician. And what that means is this is that we need to give people an advice where they need a mentor not a musician. Now follow with me. Giving Saul an advice saying that you go bring David Look how, look how this sounds. Saul is a king. David is wannabe king. David is future king. David is a teenager. Okay. Will David ever rebuke Saul? Of course not. David is scared of Saul. David loves Saul. Even if David, if Saul is possessed, you never see David coming to Saul and says, dude, you got some issues. Never. Saul, David was just there says you know what you're awesome just here we go you like a different song I'll give you a different song but you never see David you know coming to Saul and says hey dude 
my throne over there you you get out of there man no he's afraid of Saul he because he's a teenager he's a young man and those are the people usually we look for advice from those people who are afraid to tell you the truth we like to have Davids around and listen to me they're they're amazing they're powerful they're anointed the only difference about them is they don't have the gut to tell you the truth and if you are off the line they will never tell you the truth why because they're scared of you Samuel on the other hand well you're afraid of Samuel <laughs> see he's not gonna invite Samuel why because Saul is afraid of Samuel and these are the people we do not want on our list we block them on their phones we put them on a special do not pick up it's him calling we say to them that my phone's been disconnected when we meet them in church because those are the people who will tell us the truth and honestly those are the people who hold the key to open our prison and because we are afraid of them what we do is we push them out and surround ourselves with people who pat us on the back sing our kumbaya my lord kumbaya my long lord lyrics and because we feel good they like us we must be in a good relationship with God yet we still got demons in order to be free you got to go to people who will tell you no who, who you know they're not afraid of you they're just not afraid of you they love you they honor you but they're not afraid to tell you the truth I have few people in my life I'm not afraid to tell the truth and they know that well there are people there are other people I will never tell the truth because I'm scared I love them but I, I'm not in a position some are a lot older and it's just not my position I am not I am gonna love and respect them. I don't have the calling they have somebody else who can tell them the truth my pastor he's not afraid of me not at all I on the other hand that's a different story my pastor he will tell me the truth and for some of you I do the same thing for you if you're out of line I will tell you the truth with respect with love I will pray for you I will do whatever it takes so that we work together but I am not gonna let you suffer and simply over there just tell you what you want to hear and see you being damaged surround yourself with people who like Samuel not like David David will you need David's because if you always have Samuel's you will be depressed because these always people tell you the truth and you're like after that like man I don't want the truth <laughs> just give me a pill okay <laughs> give me an Advil I don't want the truth you need to have people both who cheer you up and people who confront you and tell you the truth number three is people who lead us to deliverance not give us relief people who lead us to deliverance not just give us relief what that simply means is that people who whose advice involves understanding spiritual world instead of just saying oh well you guys have marriage problems you just you just need to just just love each other a little bit more you realize everybody in the family is divorced it's a curse um, just 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 hang in there just cheer them up you know encourage them you know I'll buy you guys lunch buy you you know a meal for you guys to go on a date and that's about it but if our advice doesn't involve understanding spiritual world our advice is shallow our advice is, is it's not deep enough and it's not going to change somebody's life make sure your advice involves deliverance not just relief many people have gotten relief today but they're not delivered I give a lot of people relief in sermons Many times I get people right and they say, you know what, you really encouraged me. I had a, such a rough day. And it, it's encouraging, to honestly, to hear that. But at the same time, I know the real problem. And it discourages me. Because I don't want to just give them relief. Because th then the next day is going to be the same problem. I want them to be free from that. And for that to happen, you and I, we must understand. Not just give people a Band-Aid or an Advil, but to deal with the root of their problems. Okay, hold this, hold this tight. Hold this tight. Yeah, hold this, okay. This is what happens. When you gotta, see, because his hand is warm, in 30 minutes, this ice will completely melt. Anytime in your life, there's an atmosphere of heat. Anything devil throws with time will melt away. Now, if you put this ice in the freezer, this ice will become cold. Actually, if you put water in the freezer it becomes ice because of atmosphere for the same reason bananas grow in Jamaica but they do not grow in Alaska why because of I because of atmosphere if in your life there is an atmosphere of heat and Satan throws something at you guess what happens with the amount of time it's gonna melt away correct 
but if God throws something good in your life and there is a cold atmosphere you will turn water into ice because of bad atmosphere now let's put this ice back okay he doesn't he does not have ice no more is your hand still cold yes. but he doesn't have ice no more many times when people get free the demon is out but the feeling is still there ice is gone see when you come and you give your life to Jesus Christ and you say my life I got a new life but you go back to the same problems you're like but they're the same problems nothing changed see the ice is gone the hand is still cold and if you keep on following Jesus Christ your hand will get warmer because we see people all the time who surrender their lives to Jesus and they go back home and they're like you know what well my, this hand is still cold this thing is still cold this thing is still not there and they're saying nothing changed everything changed but just because your hand is cold doesn't mean you have ice there you had ice before but Jesus at your salvation and at deliverance takes it and sometimes it could be weeks for some people it could take months for the coldness to go away you gave devil 20 years to mess up your life can you give God at least 20 months to restore it? Some of us want to give God 20 minutes. The clock is out Lord. Really? You gave devil 20 years. Some people seven years to get you in the hole that you are in and you're giving God a few seconds. It's like throwing the eyes. Okay I want my hand to be hot. Just wait homie relax. God removes the problem. But with time the symptoms will go away with time I've seen it happen all over where people financially begin to just simply pay off their debts and begin to with time that the, the, the demon was gone nothing right away changed what changed is the ice was gone and the hands start getting warmer and warmer more promotions more open doors peace at night this and that begin to just simply fold see revival is what God gave us already but for some of us we're still feeling the coldness oh well well people were not getting saved you need to forget about that because that is going away with every single service in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. When we give people advice and people get delivered we must understand never to give attention to your feelings because what God takes away you might still feel but just for a moment.